Dear students, welcome to my next class on quantum mechanics. Today, we are going to discuss about two applications of uncertainty principle. We have already seen, uh, seen that uncertainty principle says that the product of uncertainties in any two conjugate quantities should be greater than or equal to h cut by 2. We have seen the uncertainties in position and momentum and also uncertainty in energy and time. So, here we are having two applications of uncertainty principle. The first application of uncertainty principle is that we can explain the absence of electrons inside a nucleus with the help of uncertainty principle. By the uncertainty, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, we can explain the absence of electron inside a nucleus. That is, if we know that the composition of nucleus is of neutrons and protons. So, if electrons were present inside the nucleus, what energy should it possess? From that, we can explain the absence of electron inside a nucleus. For that, consider a nucleus. The radius of nucleus is of the order 5 into or 5 Fermi or 5 into 10 raised to minus 15 meter is the nuclear radius. So, if the electron was inside the nucleus, the position should be within this limit 5 into 10 raised to minus 5 meter, 15 meter or this is the order of position. If the position order is position is of this order, then uncertainty in position should also be of the same order if the electron was present inside the nucleus. That is uncertainty in position should be of the order 5 into 10 raised to minus 15 meter applying uncertainty principle in position and momentum. What is it? Delta x, delta p and product of uncertainties in position and momentum should be greater than or equal to h cut by 2 where h cut is h by 2 pi and h is the Planck's constant. Now this we can write this as equal to delta x into delta p in approximately equal to h cut by 2 or here you can substitute for this that is delta p approximately equal to h cut by 2 into delta x that is equal to 1.05 into 10 raised to minus 34 divided by 2 into this is 5 into 10 raised to minus 15 meter. This is of the order 1.1 into 10 raised to minus 20 kilogram meter per second. This is the uncertainty. What is this? This is an uncertainty in momentum. If uncertainty in momentum is of this order, momentum should be of the same order. We can take it as approximately equal to this order 1.1 into 10 raised to minus 20 kilogram meter per second. That is, if a particle is having such a high momentum, it sh its velocity should be comparable to the velocity of light then the total energy of the particle should be calculated using the relativistic expression. That is, relativistic expression is E square is equal to P square C square plus M0 square C raised to 4. This is a relativistic expression for total energy. Since P is very high, this M0 rest mass energy can be neglected or expression can be E equal to P into C. Now putting these values 1 point this will be approximately equal to 1.1 into 10 raised to minus 20 into 3 into 10 raised to 8 joules converting this into mega electron volt we will get this as approximately equal to 20 mega electron volt. What is this? This is the energy of an electron if the electron was present inside the nucleus or if a nucleus has to hold this electron, the electron should have a minimum of 20 mega electron volts of energy. But we know that all the experiments shows that even the electrons in unstable atom does not possess such a high amount of energy or an electron can never have such a large amount of energy. That is the reason why electrons are absent inside the nucleus or electrons can only be present inside the nucleus because they can never achieve such a large amount of energy. Now, the second application of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is 
the explanation of natural line broadening you know that the when atoms emit radiation we, we can observe spectral lines they are observed as spectral lines spectral lines should have specific frequency or should have a specific wavelength but in practice there will be the spectral lines will be slightly broadened and which is unavoidable and that is known as the natural line broadening the lines will not be very precise but there should be a small spread in the wavelength or there, is, there will be a small spread in the frequency of this like this light which is emitted light is emitted or radiations are emitted when an atom jumps from higher energy level to the lower energy level the excess of energy is emitted as photon or excess of energy will be emitted as radiations having a particular frequency but the, the radiation will be having a frequency which will be which will be slightly broadened or the spectral line will be slightly slightly broadened and that is known as the phenomenon of natural line broadening this nature natural line broadening can also be explained on the basis of heisenberg's uncertainty principle we know that when an atom is in the higher energy level if, if you consider two energy levels e1 and e2 e such that e2 is greater than e1 then an atom when it comes down to the higher comes comes down from the higher energy level to the lower energy level the excess of energy will be emitted as radiation or energy will be energy difference will be emitted as radiations or e2 minus e1 will be equal to h nu but this nu will not have a precise value that will be slightly broadened that is why we see the spectral lines as slightly broadened we will see what is the amount of broadening or how what is the irreducible limit of accuracy with which we can measure the frequency of such a radiation such an emitted radiation for that we can we, we know that in an excited state an atom can stay for a time of time limit of about 10 raised to minus 8 seconds 10 raised to minus 8 second is the time for which an atom can exist can exist in the excited state that is using the uncertainty principle in energy and time uncertainty principle in energy and time states are delta e delta t approximately equal to h cut by 2 or we know that E is equal to H nu or delta E will be equal to H into delta nu or E delta E is equal to H into delta nu into delta T will be approximately equal to H cut by 2 or delta nu will be equal to H cut by 2 into H into delta T h and h cancel h by 2 pi that is here in the denominator we have a 2 pi that is 2 into 2 pi is 4 pi into delta t if this delta t is approximately equal to 10 raised to minus 8 seconds then this will be equal to 1 by 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 8 which will be approximately equal to 8 megahertz what is this 8 megahertz the same megahertz represents the broadening in the frequency of a spectral line which is emitted when an atom jumps from the excited state to the ground state from a higher energy level to the lower energy level if an atom is coming down the excess energy will be emitted as a radiation and this delta nu represents the represents the inaccuracy in frequency of the emitted radiation that is this is an irreducible limit of accuracy with which a light can be accuracy with which the frequency of emitted radiation can be measured this is the minimum broadening in its frequency and this phenomenon is known as natural broadening and this natural broadening can be explained on the basis of uncertainty principle thus these two are the applications of uncertainty principle one is the absence of electrons inside a nucleus that is using uncertainty principle in, in terms of position and momentum we can explain the absence of electron inside the nucleus and also by the uncertainty principle in energy and time in terms of energy and time we can explain the natural broadening phenomenon thank you